generator. There are two fuel lines. One's the output, the high pressure line, which is this metal one I'm removing. And the other one's a rubber one that's just above it that comes from the fuel tank. You don't need to remove that one. A um, couple of turns here with a wrench and you should be able to remove it by hand. Once you've removed it, just bend the pipe, get it out of your way. You can easily bend it back into place later. Your next step is to remove the inspection window cover. Underneath you'll find a gasket and uh, most of the times it'll be oil soaked like it is here and might even tear a little bit. But as long as you have a piece of it left, it should be fine. You don't have to worry about it. You can reuse it. This is the throttle control. It's normally off or on, not in between. You see it's moving inside something, which we'll see in a moment. You can release the throttle to shut the engine off, or you can lock it in the run position. And we'll get to that in a moment. The engine speed is directly proportional to the amount of fuel this pump pumps. When it pumps is the fuel injection timing. That's determined by how close this fuel pump is to the camshaft that makes contact with it and causes a plunger to move and pump fuel. The closer it is to the engine, the sooner it's going to pump. The farther away it is, the later it's going to pump. That space is critical and the shims underneath here that we're going to see determine when this timing happens, when this contact happens. And believe it or not, these little tiny shims underneath make a huge difference on fuel injection timing. Now that governor arm you saw moving before when I moved the throttle left to right, that fork fits, or this piece right here, fits right into that fork. And if it's not sitting inside the fork, it won't be able to adjust the amount of fuel the pump is pumping. So if you, when you reinstall it, if it's not lined up correctly, you'll have no control over your engine speed. are the three shims. They're all different thicknesses. doesn't matter what order they go in as long as they're all in. If you're in a higher altitude, let's say 3,000 feet, then uh, eliminating one of them will advance the fuel injection timing. It might help you overcome a little bit of power loss and get rid of some smoke if your generator is smoking um, because of the lower air density. Just removing one shim will make a big difference in fuel injection timing and uh, perhaps uh, get rid of some problems you might have at higher altitudes around uh, 3,000 to 4,000 feet. Above that, I wouldn't bother. Uh, very careful lining this up again. Move the throttle back and forth. Look inside at the governor uh, fork. Make sure it lines up with the fuel pump. Pin here has to fit right in between it. Now if you don't line it up properly and you're actually sitting on top of the fork when you bolt it down, you'll bend it and wreck it and it'll not be covered under warranty. So play around with the throttle control here, look inside the inspection window, make sure it's lined up and it's in the middle of the fork before you push this in and tighten down the, the nuts. They're very important or your engine's either going to race and you won't be able to shut it off or it'll have erratic speed and the RPM will... Well, there will be no control over the RPM. Now I had to rotate the engine a little bit because the lobe on the camshaft was pressing against the 
fuel pump doing what it's supposed to do to cause it to pump but when I took it apart it was a little spring loaded and rather than try and fight the spring and put the pump back into place I just rotate the engine a little bit gives me a little more play and then the studs then the studs will stick out easier and you'll be able to get the uh, bolts back on so the space we have now it's a lot better that the engine was, was rotated everything fits into place much easier it's all lined up everything looks good put it back together again one last check everything's fine tighten her up even though this gasket was oil soaked it's not under high pressure here it's fine replaced it put the inspection window cover back over it Tighten the bolt. You don't need to heave down on it. The final step is replacing the high pressure fuel line. Since I bent it, it's not lining up, so you can bend it back. Get it finger tight. You'll feel where it takes. Don't cross thread it. Go as far as you can by hand. And the final half turn or so can be done with a wrench. Make sure it's good and tight. Maybe crank the engine a little bit and make sure nothing's leaking. And you're done.